Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. And in this episode I began by trying to go to the pod and then pressing escape immediately uh, but it seems like it already popped into midair. So well uh, the consensus viewpoint was that we would use hack gravity to solve this problem. Um, well no better time like uh, than the present, right? Uh, oh, wait. Oh, uh, oh, it, it ended up on. Oh, hold up. That. Oh, okay. It landed already. I thought it had popped up a little bit higher than that. Um, it's. Oh! It, it's skidding. Um, uh, tilt it. You know what? Hmm. Let's retract gear, since they're all blowing up anyway. It's paused. Try and upright it. Now, in other attempts, I noted that the Kerbal actually glitched quite a lot. So I'm not even going to bother with anything on the surface. Okay, uh, well this is upright. In other words, I'm not going to have them go out and collect anything. Let me unhack gravity there. Okay, now now we're all settled. Not necessarily pointed in the right direction. Let me turn off RCS just to keep things right there. Okay, yeah, I had uh, on one attempt to do things, I had brought Alan out and uh, not only did he uh, blow up another landing strut, but Actually, uh, the pod, for some glitchy reason, flew like hundreds of meters away, and Alan flew in the opposite direction, so it was like some sort of like, the explosive event, except no explosion. It was weird. So, I'm, I'm sort of bummed out by all the things. But, uh, yeah, I don't think we can uh, wait the two days and twelve hours to fulfill the contract. Uh, quite apart from everything else, it would be tight on our oxygen supply. Uh, so two days and 12 hours. I didn't realize when we did this mission that uh, there was this time requirement. And two days and 12 hours is a heck of a lot more than I planned for in terms of oxygen. Um, that leaves us with four days and five hours to get back. And that's pushing it. We do have a lot of fuel, but getting back, you really can't go faster very easily. There's no mechanism to like force your way to the earth in a straightforward manner. So that's the rub. On the bright side we would be able to fill that contract but right now I'm, I'm not even sure I want to bring Alan out or or anybody out. Joan either. The, the ladder system does work by the way. I mean, I guess if I do have them not let go of the ladder, I can have one pop out and maybe that's good enough to get some signs. We'll see. But if they let go of the ladder, it's all like the bad. So, I mean, uh, EV report? Obviously not. If I get you really, really close to surface, we can't plant a flag anyway, but really, really close to the surface, could you like grab a surface sample right now? Don't let go of the ladder. Oh, sticky. No. Alright, I'll try one more time. Let me F5. Right here. Okay. Take surface sample. Okay, keep. EV report, keep. Okay, grab. Oh, okay. Well, it was a good idea not to move him away from the pod, but you can see the pod is rocking all over the place too. All right. Well, we've done science. Let's just go. So target our return, our craft with the return fuel. Okay. Right. Everything seems to be in order. Let me unlock this fuel now. 
RCS has to be on. And let's just leave. Okay, next stage. Wow, there's a lot of lag. It's like the game does not like it that I... I'm out of the grips of its dastardly plan or something. Mm, close to purchase since it's going up now. Let's coast a bit. Let's see what's really going on here. That's probably the closest approach right there. So if we wait until we get over there. Okay, we are now approaching the return stage. And we have communication with Earth, so the, the stage should be under our control. Obviously, this does mean that we are going to fail that uh, contract, the moon landing contract, because we don't have enough time to send another mission. But we'll have to recover from that. At least we'll have done the lunar orbit contract. But I'll have to admit that that was my fault, not properly reading the contract, which said that we had to stay for two and a half days and uh, not putting enough oxygen on. Not to mention we were on the dark side of the moon and electric charge would have probably been depleted. Alright, we are closing decisively. Nearly one meter per second. Breakneck pace. Uh, it shows me pointed away from the target a bit. Oh boy. Oh, but there are there is magnetism. There is there are signs of contact. Okay, uh just let magnetism do its thing and we are docked. That's a lot more magnetism than I normally expect from realism overhaul. Wonder what actually affects the existence of magnetism sometimes. Okay, well, we can transfer the fuel into this bit. We can control from here. Yep, yeah, there we go. And now I can plot our way back. Okay, we are preparing for our burn back to home. And I think we might as well go. Let me just check that it still confirms that our lunar orbit contract was fulfilled. All we have to do is land or splash down for that one. Okay. Okay, that uh, leaves us with no periapsis or suborbital, well, crash landing apoapsis. Let's pull that back a bit. There we go. Uh, 59 kilometers sounds fine. Um, let's try 56.5. I feel we can do 56.5. We don't have quite as much fuel left over to retro burn once we get over there to drop our orbit, so we will need to go a little bit lower. I hope that 56.5 is still safe. We're going to find out. Oh, and if you were wondering, uh, it looks like our return will take five days and two hours, so definitely longer than we would have had if we tried to stay on the moon for two days and 12 hours. I could have pushed that a bit, but I don't think I could have brought it down below four days and five hours. So that's the rub. Not with the Delta V that we have. All right, on our trip back, it looks like the fuel cell fuel is fine. But that, of course, is with the fuel that we also had on the transfer stage, well, the return stage, I'll call it, though it did a lot of work. Okay, at this point, I think we can ditch this stage. 
and move all the fuel over to that portion. Also filling the capsule up as much as possible. So I don't know if we ever get a system that converts liquid oxygen to oxygen, but that would be handy. And of course something that ought to exist. Okay, pretty satisfied that that's okay. Let's um, undock. And this side is just what it is. It's gonna crash into the atmosphere. This side we can maneuver a bit. So let's back off. Okay, now it is time to bring the orbit in as much as we can. We've got 1,221 meters per second. One good thing about using these for this purpose is that we can throttle. The Astros engines can't, of course. Okay, uh, 57.5 kilometers will take, and we've got 99 left in there. Now let me just make sure that we have everything else topped off as possible. Uh, letting go of the service module. Go that away. All right, arming parachutes. Everything should be as before. And finally, activate descent mode. Forgot to adjust the thrusters so that it's easier for Smart ASS to roll this thing. Right now, we are, well, we're uh, actually approaching Sydney right now. Interesting orbit. So we will splash down in the Pacific, very definitely. Probably not too far off the coast of Australia. Well, service module bits are exploding. Okay, we aimed for a 57.5 kilometer periapsis, but what we'll actually get down to is... Probably about 60.4 kilometers, but that should be enough. We'll be coming straight down. I mean, maybe a little bit of a bounce up. Okay, we're basically through the heat, and now we need to go through the G-forces. We'll have a peak below 80 kilometers. We're now below 70 kilometers, 6,400 meters per second, 0.65 Gs. Everything seems to be all right. Okay, 4.2 G's, 48 kilometers. Looks like we're peaking out here. 4.76 G's, about 43.5 kilometers in altitude. Okay, we should be below the speed of sound right there. Let me turn off Smart ASS and Descent Mode. Let the aerodynamics do their thing. Okay, so here we are. We've got our parachutes out. 100 meters per second or thereabouts. And exact location. Well, a little bit further away from Australia than would strictly be called close, but uh, we're nowhere. We're not halfway across the Pacific yet, so it still counts color of the water seems rather murky unless it's actually land 
Sort of looks like more of a land texture, but it'd be an interesting island or atoll that we happen to have hit. I strongly doubt it. I think there's just some weird texture in this part of the Pacific. Whoa. Scared me for a sec, and uh, yeah, there's obviously some questionable everything in this particular location. Um, somehow the height map isn't quite high enough. Yeah. Okay, before uh, KSP decides to eat this pod, let's recover it. Okay, 320 science earned. Uh, parts recovered, well, not, not as much value as we would have liked. No experience gain for Joan or Alan, because they've gone there before actually. Uh, but we've got quite a lot of science, let's take a look at the R&D building. So uh, somebody suggested that I just get the NK33 and 43 so that we can see what kind of performance we can actually get out of the Nico 2544. And it looks like this advanced stage, advanced stage combustion uh, will be the thing to do for that. So let's research that. While we're at it, we might as well get more refined rocketry in general for higher grade engines. And of course, that looks like it might get us to nuclear. Does that actually connect to that? No, that actually goes past. It looks like for nuclear propulsion, we need Hydrolox engines, which I believe we're already researching, yes. Um, so yeah, specialized construction we would need for nuclear propulsion. Heck, why not? I mean, let's do Nerva and everything. Yeah. Okay. And refined rocketry? I mean, I'm not too sure gas generator cycle, you know, mature Hydrolox engines. Maybe we should just save... Oh, can we actually click research this? Oh yeah! Well, we're, we're researching nuclear propulsion now. Well, not now. Uh, it's in the queue. Uh, but we've committed to researching nuclear propulsion, so that's good. Let's take a look at our uh, priorities here. Mature solids. You know what? Let's get those um, that advanced stage combustion first, since we've got a rocket that can benefit from it. And then the Hydrolox engines, we have to do that. I'm surprised that... Uh, see, now it's it's got to be confused, because... Like, I can move state a nuclear propulsion ahead of specialized construction, and that will totally mess it up because specialized construction is a requirement for, for the nuclear engines. Let's hold off on nuclear engines for a bit. Um, okay, so there's that. But I want to know what the ramifications of failing the contract are going to be. You know, the moon landing one. So, let's see. Looks like we're gonna lose 876,000 funds, but and then our reputation is gonna take a huge hit. Let's just time warp through it, get it over with. 21 days. We can't really build much in that time. Well, okay, we we've got a pretty good build rate, but let's see. Um, well, we are building Spaceport One, so that's good. Uh, actually, launching. Capping this episode off with a quick launch of a space station sounds like a good idea. Then we could launch in the next episode a uh, Earth Orbit's Kelly launcher in order to rendezvous with it and fulfill a contract, I believe. We do have a contract to... Well, there's the crew duration contract for 14 days. First space station requires space for four crew, but a crew of at least two Kerbals is what we need. So, yeah, we'll have to send two Kerbals up there. So, let's just uh, warp. Human moon landing, delete on close. Um, it doesn't seem to have taken our funds out. Hasn't the deadline passed? Well, now it says deadline 23 days. Was it messing with me? Human moon landing, yeah. 23 days. I thought it said 21 days just a little while ago. Okay.
Well, um, let me just check. When's the... Ooh. The G Earth to Jupiter transfer window. See, we got so many things to do. Earth to Jupiter transfer window is in 11 days, but the Jupiter orbiter is going to take 22 days. I think we need to rush that a bit. Okay, a lot. Um, it's worth it. Okay, so we can make that transfer window then. Or close to it anyway. I don't know what's going to happen with failing that contract because I thought it was already supposed to fail. But since it hasn't, we'll launch our spaceport one and we'll just do that. Okay, here we are and the station sort of bounced in the clamps for a bit. Um, oh, here we go. Contract deadline expired. So it turns out that only getting into flight mode did it decide to acknowledge that it had passed the deadline. That's a little bit weird, but I guess we will be able to see the results of that. So yeah, the last time we tried to launch... Oh my word. Wow, that reputation hit is pretty darn stunning. It's a good thing we have some contracts in the works. Um, yeah, wow. So the contract hit is like, well, where is it again? Um, I've never seen it like that before. Yeah, now I'm concerned. Okay, what was I saying? All right, so the last time we tried to launch this was on the Nico 621 and we had engine failures and that failed. But this time we have the 606, which is more reliable because more engines per stage means that we can compensate for a failure of an engine and we hope that it will work out. We do want to put this into an orbit that matches the moons for uh, simplicity's sake. So let's set that as a target. We begin to... Uh, it looks like we have some boil offs, so let's fix that. I also don't know why we start out with less electric charge than we should. Okay, anyway, SAS is on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. I hope this doesn't uh, hurt agency morale or anything. Now this rocket we could probably use KOS for, given the redundancy on all the stage uh, on the two stages. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Nothing untoward has happened yet. Let's check on upper stage thrust to weight ratio. Pretty good. Shouldn't have to do too much. Sort of a shame I didn't make this stage recoverable. Could have probably got it back with the parachutes and floats and all. Okay. Come on. Set. And ignition. Okay. First stage was perfect. Now we have six NK-19s. Alright, 100 kilometers, fairing set. Oh, I see a problem. Dang it! Procedural parts or procedural fairings is ruining my station. It has the gap problem. I didn't notice it because it didn't affect a stage above it. But looks like we're gonna have a station with a mysterious gap right there. That's annoying. Ignore the gap, please. So as far as where we have to put this station, 
Thank goodness I didn't miss any sort of inclination requirement. But it just wants above 400 kilometers and below 2,000 kilometers. So we might as well go straight up to it. Because we can't restart these engines, remember. We have to go straight to the desired orbit. Otherwise, we're not going to get there, or we're at risk of not getting there, let me put it that way. It's probable we'll have to boost up our periapsis with uh, what little fuel we have on the station, though. Or we could use the crew uh, transfer pod to boost up the station. You could do it that way. We do have about 400 meters per second in the station itself. But those engines are really, really tiny. Okay, here we go. We do want to dispose of this stage. So that'll have to do it. 602 kilometers by 31. And oop, come on. All right, separation and ignition of these little guys. Okay, they seem to be working fine. We'll wait until we reach apoapsis before we use them. But let's get all the fiddly bits out now. Okay, those are the solar panels that the antennae did not activate. Let's do that. Okay, RCS thrusters appear to be working. Though why we only have them right there instead of all over the place is beyond me. I might have forgotten to put them up here for some reason. I have been I might have replaced the original version of that tank, I think. Okay. We should probably start the thrusters now because they're going to take a little bit of time to get us up to 400 kilometers. 0.024 G's. You can see how poorly we are accelerating because of the position of the stage right there and the fact that I'm in 2x time warp. Well, we really don't have to put it as low as the ISS, so we could put it higher. Our rendezvous vehicle, our crew vehicle, is designed to get up to fairly high orbits. Okay, we're above 400 kilometers, and it's satisfied that we've launched the correct type of space station. Now it's just a matter of getting Kerbals to it. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's shut it down there. It's 617 by 506, 1 hour and 35 minute orbit, and about 45 seconds, and 0.54 degree inclination relative to the moon. We are currently passing over Madagascar. It's a 24 ton station with some fuel left. And it's got a weird gap here. That's really, that's just so irritating. But all right. Well, here we are. Let's go back to the Space Center. That is some pretty serious badness right there. Um, at least we still get contracts. It looks like we can get do a 3 to LEO. It hardly gives us any benefit as far as reputation though. Science data from Space Around Mars. It lo doesn't look like we get many lucrative contracts now. I think we're in trouble for that. Yeah, as far as the first space station contract, it gives us a healthy amount of reputation for completion. Looks like the Jupiter flyby will as well. Um, looks like it doesn't really matter on the on the Jupiter stationary orbit mission and that's gonna be a tough one too. 
Saturn flyby, that gives us quite a lot. This this one does not hurt us too much. This one, not no hurt, but uh, pretty big benefit. So we'd like to see that Saturn flyby happen to save ourselves. But perhaps this is the time for some administrative stuff. Administration building we have never taken a look at. Um, and it looks like for good reason. I, I, I want to convert to public relations. Yields one reputation for each. Yeah, so setup costs 70,000. Yeah, I want reputation for funds, but it doesn't let me. But we, oh, we need a reputation of negative uh, 438 or higher to activate that and our current reputation is negative 998 uh, we can't even do this bailout grant but that that's weird that's not what we want anyway okay so yeah no strategies will help us now we must complete some missions so Next time, we will try and complete a mission. We will try and bring Kerbals to our station. And after that, we can look towards launching our Jupiter Orbiter mission. Though that, I doubt, will actually fulfill this stationary orbit of Jupiter contract because I think that's fairly low. And then we have a Mars window, so we should, we should probably build a Mars mission for that. Okay, so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.